Okay, so to end the game, I've just gone onto Google and type in flag sprite. We're gonna have a flag. We're gonna click here, click free download. View clip art. It says our download should start automatically. So hopefully that happens. I'm just gonna click, click here. Okay, so now we have this art. Now if we go back to our platformer, we can go to our project, go to assets. Then we see in our downloads folder, we have the file, we can just drag it right in. Okay, so we're gonna grab one of our platforms that have five in them. And we are going to drag it to the end. And then we're gonna rename this to end platform. Then we're gonna create an empty, and we're gonna call this flag. And then we're gonna give it a sprite renderer, which we can drag our flag into. So as you can see, it's huge. We'll scale it down to like 0 0.1. Give it the sorting layer of environment. 0 0.1 is too big, maybe 0 0.01. That's a bit too small. Maybe 0 0.5, nope, 0 0.2. We're gonna go one five. And then we're gonna flip our sprite. And then we're just gonna bring it over to here. Okay. So now on our ground, we're gonna create a new uh, script called end platform. And then we're going to open it up in Visual Studio. So we're going to get reference to our flag, uh, our flags transform specifically, because we want our player to walk to it. So then we're going to have, and we can just delete these. We're going to have void on collision enter 2D. And then we'll just say if collision dot game object dot tag equals player, then collision dot game object dot get component player controller dot one level. And then we'll send in the flag location. So then in our player controller, we're going to have a new function called one level with the transform of our flag. Next up top, we need to store reference to uh, the flag location. And then whether we've won the level or not, We'll scroll back down. We'll set flag location equal to flag. Um, one level equal to false. And then we're going to call game master dot one level, which will do stuff once we create it. And then we're going to have a can move, which equals false. So then we have to create, can move up here, public bool can move equal to false. By default, we're gonna set it to true. And then in our fixed update, we're gonna say 
if we can't move, then return. And the same thing here. So actually, instead of doing this, we could say if not active or not can move, then return. So now we'll do the return if either one of these things are, are true. However, before we do this check, we're going to say if one level and transform dot position dot x does not equal flag dot position dot x then we are going to change our animation to be animations dot walking because we're going to walk towards our flag once we reach this platform we're going to create a new position equal to vector two dot move towards transform dot position which is our current position and then new vector two flag location dot position dot x which will be the x-axis because we want it to move towards our flags x-axis but then we want to keep it on our current transform.position.y uh, because we don't want to go into the air. And then we're just going to set it at time.delta time times two so that it walks relatively quickly. Actually, uh, we may as well just do this time.delta time times our speed. Then we're going to move our rigid body towards our new position. So if we have one our level um, and they are touching, then that means we've reached our destination. So we're going to stop our player rb.velocity equals vector2.0. We're going to change our animation to animations.idle. And then we are going to set one level equal to false. So now we need to create our one level script in our game master. So let's go public void one level. And all this is gonna do is set our running timer equal to false. So once we hit the platform and move one level, we no longer want the timer to go down. But then once they actually reach the flag, then we want to warp them to uh, the next level. So one level is going to start as soon as we hit the platform. But then one level transition is going to start once they've reached the flag. So we're going to have another timer called running transition timer. And when we call one level transition, we'll set running transition timer equal to true. So then we're going to have if running transition timer. Then we're going to have the usual variables. So public float current transition timer. And then public float time to transition which we're just gonna to set to be five. So we're gonna do current uh, transition timer plus equals time.delta time. We're gonna say if current transition timer is greater than or equal to uh, time to transition, then current transition timer equals zero, running transition timer equals false, and then we're going to call a thing that changes our scene, which we will do after. So now if we go back to our player controller, we scroll up here. So once we've actually reached the flag, which triggers right here, we're going to call game master 
dot one level transition. All right, so that was a whole bunch of stuff. Let's see if any of it works. So we are going to take our player and we're gonna lift them up and just have them fall on our platform and see what happens. Absolutely nothing. So we forgot to drag our flag location into here on this script. So let's try that and see if that fixes it. So it seems like it's not actually trying to do anything. So um, when we won the level, I accidentally set one level to equal false. So we're gonna set that to true. Maybe you guys pick that up. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so our player walks to the flag. And then, well, I guess we haven't set it up to change our scene. But what we can do is go back to our project and create a new folder called scenes. Oh, we already have a folder called scenes. So this is our scene right now, I believe. Yep, so we're gonna copy and paste it. Oh, it looks like you can't, we'll just click create. And then scene. So this is gonna be level two. We're going to open it and then add it to our build settings because if we don't do that, it won't work. Add open scenes. And then we're gonna go back to our sample scene. And then we're going to have a script on our game master called change scene. And then we'll load it up in Visual Studio. So we're gonna delete this and then we're just gonna have a public string scene to change to. And then we're gonna have a public void change to scene. And then we're gonna type in scene manager dot load scene scene name. So basically we're gonna say load level two because that's the name of the scene. And then up top in order for that scene manager to work, we have to use unity engine dot scene management. So then um, it'll give us the option to name scene name does not exist in current context. What's that? Oh, scene to change to, sorry. So now we're gonna change our scene to level two because that's the name of our scene, which is in our build settings. So it automatically will know to go to level two. And now if we load up our game master, we can call get component, change scene, dot, um, change to scene. So that was a lot of stuff. Let's see what happens when we click play. So we've won the level. And it loads our next level. Okay, so there are a few things that I want from you guys. First of all, uh, like I've mentioned before, I want you to take a platform and I want you to add it to your prefabs. So we've done it with the player before, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. We've got this disappearing platform. So what you're gonna wanna do is drag it into here and now you have disappearing platform in your prefabs. So now you're gonna to wanna to delete every other disappearing platform you have so that there's just one. And let's scroll out, because I believe it's over here. Okay, so now I want you to clone that prefab. And then after you've cloned it, 
I want you to put it back where it was before. And you can tell that things are prefab when they're blue. So we're going to set that to 41, 45, 49, and 53. Okay, so now we have zero disappearing platforms that are not part of the prefab. And remember the reason why this is good is because let's say we need to change something like our box collider. Um, let's say we need to do that. We could then click modified component, apply prefab the disappearing platform. And then if we click another one of them, the, uh, the ground will be small, just like the other one. So it's really good to do it like this. So we're gonna control Z so that it reverts back. And then we'll apply it again. Oh, it's automatically good. Okay, so now I want you to take your falling platforms and do the exact same thing. Your normal platforms and do the exact same thing. You can make like a platform five prefab uh, that just has like five sprites and a platform 10, which just has 10. Um, I want you to do the exact same thing for spikes, um, the moving platform, the falling platform, all that stuff. Something like a house you don't need a prefab for unless you plan on using it multiple times. Uh, it's basically you want a prefab for anything that you have to uh, make multiples of and make changes to. Um, you don't necessarily need to use the background, but honestly, anything's good. So what's really good about it too is that prefabs allow you to carry things into the next level um, very easily. So for example, if I load up our level two scene, I can then drag projects folder down here so we can see both the scene and the projects folder. And if I go to our prefabs folder, I can just drag a frog in and now there's a frog in. So as you can see, prefabs are really handy for transitioning things to different levels because you don't want to recreate the frog sprite and do all that stuff again. So um, we can go back to our scene, sample scene. Okay, yeah. So take all that stuff, make it a prefab, including like your game master um, and your player. Your player is a prefab too. That way you can just drag your player into the next scene. So we're going to do that. Let's make it easy. Yeah, so I think you get the point here. And the reason why we didn't go with prefabs at the very beginning is because I find a lot of times when I go over stuff like this, it's really easy for someone to say, oh, that's like extra work. I don't want to do that. But you can see how much work you could have if you spent like 100 hours on this and you didn't give things prefabs. So make sure you turn everything into prefabs. Then what I want you to do is actually give a purpose to these gems. So maybe display how many gems there are, uh, display how many you've gotten when you beat the level, something like that. Something that incentivizes the player to get the gems. So I've left that up to you. And then I also want you to start working on your own level. So because I've set up a level two and I've set up all the stuff, you can now create 10 levels if you want to. Um, you can just copy and paste the components that I already have in here. And then just keep doing everything you can to keep making new characters. You can go on Google and type in sprite sheets or go on the asset store and type in like sprites. And then you can just keep downloading and adding things to your game for free. Or if you like art, you can make the sprites yourself. So that's an idea. But basically I want you to take what we've done and expand it. I know a lot of it's pretty complicated, but the way you're going to learn is just by experimenting with things. So I hope you liked this 2D platformer tutorial and keep learning. <laughs>